century, Daughters of the American Revolution, Daughters of 1812, United Daughters of the Confederacy, and First Families of Tennessee. So you about touched all bases there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, uh, as I mentioned, or didn't I need to tell you, she is Executive Director of the Sullivan County Department of Archives and Tourism. And are you taking over the fundraising and trying to promote the memorial for the Battle of Blountville? Is that what this I'm means? working with Tony Marion, and we have a whole committee that's working on that. Okay. Yeah, you're making we'll some progress. Oh, are you going to tell us about it? Okay. Yeah, I'll be quite good. Uh, <laughs> she's a member of the American Association of Professional Genealogists, Society of Tennessee Archivists, and Society of American Archivists. So I don't know how go to all those meetings, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so we're delighted to have Sheila with us, and uh, we have two archivists as a member, uh, another uh, one archivist who's a member, Sheila's not, but Brianne Wright, who is the archivist for the city of Kingsport, is a member of this group. She's not here this morning, but uh, we're delighted to have two archivists. Somebody came up to me earlier and said, if an archivist is someone old, I would volunteer. <laughs> so we've got a lot of archivists in here. <laughs> Sheila, come on up. We're delighted to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for having me this morning. He was talking about lineages and proof of your lineages for various organizations. And the funny thing about it is, you know, some of your lines you can prove backward in the 1500s or maybe even 500 AD. I have one line, however, that stops about 1824. If the records aren't there, you can't prove it. So that's just one of those things that kind of makes it fun. But nonetheless, thank you all for having me this morning. I want to talk to you about Bluntville, the history of Bluntville a little bit. I'm just going to touch on it because certainly we couldn't cover it all in this length of time. I want to also talk to you about the Battle of Bluntville. And if you have questions, feel free to stop me because I do tend to talk a little bit fast. 
um, and I did bring my cell phone not to answer the phone, but to kind of keep track of my time here. So, would somebody please dim the lights up here? Introduce, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That helps me to see and I'll put on my reading glasses. We're all at that age, I believe, where we need a little bit of glasses. Let me tell you something, first of all, about the archives, because I think that is important and relevant to why we're here. Uh, the Sullivan County Archives started up formally in 2004 in downtown Blountville. And the mission of the archives is to preserve county governmental records and to house manuscript collections and so on and so forth. All kinds of history and genealogy. But the thing that most people don't know about the Sullivan County Archives is that it crosses state and county boundaries. We're not limited to just Sullivan County. Uh, it is very much, you know, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Georgia, many states across the United States. So we're very grateful for that. Um, I don't know how these pictures are turning out because they look different on different monitors. But this is where most of our records are housed, our county governmental records. That's about five miles from my office. It's unmanned, unstaffed. Certainly, we're looking for a building in downtown Blountville where we can house all of these records and bring them home so that they will be readily available for you all whenever you're coming to the archives to search for something on your ancestors. Are any of you all into your ancestral research? Well, that's fantastic because we have lots of people all across the United States. We really invite you to come up and, and um, be with us on that. This is a picture, and I'm not being able to see this on this screen right here, so I'm kind of having to look around. This screen is a little bit dark. Um, this is a picture of part of our presentation center. I don't know how well you all can see that or not. Is that visible yes. on the screen? Good. Okay. And uh, this is more of our research center where we have, you know, books and we present governmental records and that kind of thing. And we're a little bit different from a typical library because we ask that you sign in and uh, we only allow you to bring in a blank sheet of paper and a pencil, but that's to protect <coughs> what is yours. That's to protect your records and, and so that they will be there forever. This is what we came out of. <laughs> this is what we came out of, and it was really, really bad beginning in 1995. We started doing a good survey that continued over nine years all over the county, and we had everything you could imagine from uh, just records that were nearly destroyed. We had um, bird droppings. We had everything, rats, anything that you could imagine, we had it. And right in the middle of this, what do you all notice? Broom. Pardon? Uh, no, it's ashtray. An ashtray. An ashtray. And can you imagine horror of horrors that being around our governmental records? But nonetheless, we took them out of this. We had a lot of volunteers over the years. And if you have time, we'd love to have your help in volunteering because we have a lot to do with regard to just flat folding, organizing records, and certainly we could use your help. But we've had a lot of volunteer help over the years organizing those records, taking them out of these little Woodruff files, as you call it, the little metal files, and, excuse me, that went forward and it wasn't supposed to, um, putting those, I don't know what happened to my other picture, it kind of disappeared, but nonetheless we had a picture of where they were nicely housed, and wouldn't you know that would disappear, but we've got them in acid-free boxes, which is kind of nice. It showed. Pardon? It showed. Oh, did it? Okay, good. Alrighty, our holdings include, and this is just touching on a little bit of what we have, we have county governmental records, we have a research library, uh, special collections, vertical files. In our vertical files, we have hundreds of thousands of files that are a hodgepodge of things, perhaps on your surname, perhaps on the Williams surname, or it could be on Johnson or anything else. And when you open that up, you might see a family history, a photograph, um, it could be an old obituary in the 1860s. It could be anything. So come and, and view our vertical files. We have a huge <coughs> photographic collection that uh, I think, and if you all have photographs, bring them by and let us scan them. We'll scan them while you wait. They won't be out of your possession. It doesn't matter if it's Sullivan County. It can be Scott County, Virginia. I always tell everybody you can't do Sullivan County genealogy without doing Scott County, Virginia and Washington County, Virginia. You've got to do both. So um, we have a photographic collection. We have a lot of artifacts. And in those artifacts, I'll show you in just a minute, we have some neat things. I'll, show, I'll give you a slide on in just a minute. And we have a good map collection, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Um, in our manuscript collections, and there are over a hundred of these at present, 
and we have several more to catalog. The Mary M. Carter Genealogical Collection is probably one of the best I've seen in the country. I have been blessed, God has really blessed me to be able to travel all across the United States doing research for clients and so forth, but I've never seen a collection like Mary has had. She's a dear friend of mine, and she just decided to donate everything she had to the archives, and uh, it's, it's just amazing. It's astounding when you see what she has. I think you'll really enjoy that. Uh, the other thing is her husband, W. Dale Carter. You all may have seen this in the newspaper. He has contributed his digital land database. It's on loan right now, but this land database is like nothing I have ever seen in the entire United States. For example, if you're looking for your ancestor in the 1700s, and maybe he had a land grant from the state of North Carolina, maybe it was a 400 acre land grant or a 30 acre land grant, you can view that land grant in this database and then see it overlaid on a topographical map get the GPS coordinates and drive right to it and uh, have all the meets and bounds shown for you. So it's really, really neat. You can see all the neighbors of your ancestors. And that database is a composite running from about eight, 1780 up to about 1820. So that's something you'll really enjoy and it's really, really unique to our archives. We have the original manuscript from the Homer Smith book. I think you all have seen a lot of his work. He's done several books. But we have his original manuscript. These are just a few of what we have. The Abraham Tipton Family Bible, uh, the Gaines Maps, which I'm going to show you a composite of here in just a few minutes, and the Shelby Lodge Masonic Records from 1865 to 1899, or give or take. We're really pleased to have found those, and uh, they were badly charred in an old um, fire in a fire in 1893. But nonetheless, we're glad to have them. So that's something we have. And then the Donald Lane genealogical database. That database is a composite of Sullivan County families, Scott County families, Hawkins County, Washington County, and you can just find a person in it and see their pedigree chart or their ancestors or whatever. It's just really neat. So Mary, this is a picture of my friend Mary who has donated a lot. That's only a minute portion of what she's donated. We're very grateful for her collections. We have some artifacts in our collection from the John Sevier collection. Uh, some of the ironworks pieces. We also have a rare print of Robert E. Lee. I just wanted to show you this because it's number five of six prints that were made of him um, prior to his becoming uh, a general in the Civil War. In the map collections, like I talked about, we have the Dale Carter land database. We have the William Gaines uh, historical maps, and I'll show you those. But let me show you the Carter database first. This is what you'd really find out if you came up and, and looked for your ancestor. You'd see the, see the area located in pink. I missed my pointer. I'm wanting to point on here. It, but if, can you all see that pink outline in the center yes. of the map? Yeah. Yes. That is the tract of land for John Sharp. And this is just an example of what you would see. And so when you actually would click on this tract for John Sharp, it would also give you the, like I said, the coordinates and give you the neighbors and all the meets and bounds and so forth. So that's really, really neat. Um, this is another example of the Steels in Sullivan County. Now, they're not related to me. My name is Sheila Steele Hunt, but I'm not related to the Steels of Sullivan County, strangely. It's really strange. I was thinking about that the other day. When I was working in the Draper Manuscripts, researching Steels some years ago, I found a family of steels in Kentucky on a particular river. And on that river, and according to Draper's manuscripts, there were five steel families living within five miles of each other. None of those were related one to another. So that's that's something that's interesting. If you haven't gotten any of the Draper manuscripts, there are copies on film at ETSU, and I think you'd really like that. So uh, go over and view those if you get a chance. The Gaines maps, this is the just a small cross section of a huge map. It's just very massive. And it, this one shows the post offices. And it's kind of neat because I think, Tony, I believe he put the distances between the post offices. This probably would be of great interest to you uh, in that you were a postman, I believe, over the years. Am I correct? So uh, here's his schools maps. These are some schools that, you know, you hear about all these schools that are not in existence anymore. That's kind of neat because you can see these old schools where they were located and what they were called. In our photographic collection, um, 
we have some really neat pictures. And again, this is faded on the display up here, so I hope you all can see that. But there are all kinds of pictures there. And again, uh, these cross state and county boundaries. And these are identified. They're not just pictures of anybody USA. If we actually went back to the archives and looked at these photographs, you would actually see names and places and, and so forth and see where they lived. So, um, and this is kind of neat because this is one of those old memorial cards that you used to see. They started out about the 1890s and they gave the, uh, a lot of times it was just about a death of one person. I have one in my family that's large. It's about three feet tall and about a foot wide. And it chronicles all the members of one family in the late 1800s. And all of those children, there were adult children, four of them died in, the, in their 20s. So it's, it's kind of neat, and the mother is buried at the Boatyard Cemetery, which, by the way, I hope one day they reopen the driveway to the, gate, to the Boatyard Cemetery. You all familiar with the driveway there, how it goes up? It wasn't from Brunswick Street. It actually was down from the side of the Boatyard, and I miss being able to go in that way. That just was kind of neat. Let's talk about the history of Bluntville, and as I said, I'm not going to cover everything in this short amount of time because we'd be here all day, and I think they told me I only had four or five hours, so <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to condense it. Um, we know that in 1779, Sullivan County was formed, and that was pre-Bluntville. And in 1782, James Brigham, I always want to say Brigham Young, but it was James Brigham, who had a 600-acre land grant in and around the area that later became Bluntville. And this is a, a copy of the tract, the plat map for James Brigham. That outline, the black outline in the center there, if you all can see it, that's 600 acres. And it shows Bluntville on the far south, southeast corner of that map. So um, in 1792, Brigham deeded 30 acres to the town commissioners. Uh, to lay out the town, and that's that same tract. I'm going to back it up here, and you can see the outline again. Well, I don't think it's going to... There it is. You see that outline? Kind of follow that outline with your eyes when we go to the next map. That's the same outline. Now, if you look in the pink area, right in the very center, it shows 30 acres that he gave specifically for the town of Bluntville. That's minute in the grand scheme of things in this 600-acre grant. Keep your eye on that pink area, and you will see the town lots were laid out in 1795, and here is the inset for the pink area. It shows that all of those lots, who owned them and how they were laid out. They were narrow lots, about 42 feet wide, and I forget exactly how long. It seems like a couple hundred feet, but they were very um, odd-shaped size lots. But nonetheless, we have a beautiful map and a beautiful history. And by the way, um, the Bluntville Cemetery sits just up to the west of the town itself. And um, there's always been confusion about who owned the cemetery because Will, uh, William Deary gave 30 ac one acre, excuse me, he gave one acre in 1830 to uh, the town to, or to the church, rather, the Presbyterian Church, to set aside just for the cemetery. Since then, several people have bought tracks around it. So who owns the Bluntville Cemetery? Actually, one acre is owned by the Presbyterian Church, and all the other acreage around it belongs to the individuals, and some of those have been deceased. So it's kind of a, a, an interesting point there. Bluntville was named after William Blunt, who was uh, the first governor, of course, as you know, of the territory south of the River Ohio. The Anderson townhouse was set up just for town meetings, and you can see it, it looks just like this today. Now, if you, excuse me, if you go back 30, 40, 50 years ago, this was a white frame house, and since then they've taken all of the, the siding off and exposed the beautiful woodwork, and it's just beautiful. And now the uh, traditional Appalachian Music Heritage Association meets there every Friday night. They have jam sessions. They're free. You can come in and just listen. They pick and sing something like 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock every Friday night. Uh, Pre-Civil War, we know that it was the primary stage stop before the railroad came into uh, being. In 1795, the town lots were sold off. 1810, 1801 to 1810, the Deary Inn was established. 1806, the first school, Jefferson Academy, was built, and that was right across from the cemetery in downtown Bluntville. So that was our first one. Now, we had other schools 
in Sullivan County prior to that, but I'm talking about downtown Bluntville. I think there was an early school at the Taylor Meeting House um, down in Gunnings. And in 1817, Jacob Stern was elected the first mayor of the town. The town was incorporated, believe it or not, until 1881. And today it's only one of 95 counties that is unincorporated. The county seat is unincorporated, which is kind of unique. In 1855, the Female Academy was built, and uh, in 1863, we know that the courthouse burned and uh, due to the Battle of Bluntville, which occurred on the 22nd of September. <coughs> this brings us down to the Battle of Bluntville, which I'm very pleased to tell you that we have a committee that's been dedicated for the past four or five years to establishing the Battle of Bluntville Civil War Military Park. You might ask, where is this park? We are in a very unique situation, and by the way, Tony Marion serves on that committee with me, and I'm really grateful for his help. Uh, Tony Shipley is the head of that committee. Uh, Dennis Hauser is on the committee. We have several commissioners on it. Uh, Dr. Nancy Acuff, who is our county historian, is on that. So we have a wonderful committee that's working on this. And while this is kind of unique in that uh, the Battle of Bluntville was around a town now that's already established, most of the time when you try to develop a Civil War park, you, you have all this open field and everything, but we're having to work around landowners, we're having to work around what is already owned and what is already established. So it's, it's kind of a unique situation. We're going slowly, it will take us some time, but right now the first thing you're going to see, the first visual for this for the park, is the welcome sign that's going up right now as, as we speak. Uh, we hope to have the dedication for that sign this summer. And uh, it's something we'd love to have your help on. If you're interested in Civil War history, we would love to have you um, get involved in that. So after the war, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. After the war, we know that the courthouse was built within the walls. We know that um, during the Civil War, we had Colonel John Foster with the Union Army positioned up on Cemetery Hill and he fired down upon the town and of course he hit the courthouse because they wanted to destroy the records. Everything in Bluntville, records wise, is burned before 1863 with the exception of the deeds. Those are all extant back to county formation, back to 1775. So um, we're still looking for pieces of history. You all may have a diary or something, a ledger that, that predates the Civil War. Those things are valuable to history and certainly to Sullivan County. So if you have anything like that, Please do let us know. Um, but they built the, rebuilt the courthouse within the walls. The walls did remain. In 1868, a new jail was built. And you're going to see a lot of controversy about which jail and when and so forth. And there were several jails that were built. And the courthouse was rebuilt several times as well. And most people aren't aware of that. They think that the courthouse that is standing today is the courthouse that was there during the Civil War, or the walls of it during the Civil War, and that is not true. In 1920, the courthouse was completely razed and a new courthouse built. So I couldn't talk without my hands. <laughs> um, in 1897, we had our own town hanging. Uh, that's Ooh. kind of unusual. We had two gentlemen by the name of William May, M A Y. And um, it was very hard to separate them, but we did a lot of research and we got those separated. And it was a very interesting story. And that actually would call for another whole uh, session, you know, on history. That would be really something to talk about sometime, Tony. Um, the new courthouse was built in 1920. In fact, they wrangled over that courthouse for five years before they finally got it constructed. And y'all know how that goes with county government or with city government. It just takes time to get things done. 1927, electricity came to town. Now, there's something very important I want to tell you about this. You're going to see, uh, from time to time, pictures of the town of Bluntville. And when you do, those pictures, a lot of people will put 1900, they will put 1890, 1910. And I think there's a lot of guesswork. Even I, early on, was not familiar with the history enough to know how to differentiate. And you can always look at the picture, and if you see the light poles, then you know that it's 1927 or after. So some of those photographs that were originally said to have been circa 1900, they're actually 1927 or after. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. Where did power come from? I'm sorry? Where, did, is it AEP power? You know, where did the power come from? It was called from? Bristol Gas, and I want to say 
I don't know what the other the part of it is. Bristol Gas Company yeah, of some sort. Gas and Electric or something like that. So, in 1956, another jail was built. Uh, it's the jail that they abandoned here uh, about 20 years ago or so. And in 1972, the town of Bluntville was nominated to be on the National Historic Register. So we're really proud of Bluntville as being part of that. Uh, this is the courthouse in 1920 when they were building it. This is the one that they wrangled over for about five years before they got it built. And certainly it doesn't look like that today. Actually, it's prettier today than it was then because we have all this intricate moldings and uh, the, the cupola has been really renovated and so forth. And it just, it really is a beautiful old courthouse. Um, this is the jail. And again, note the date, circa 1920. A lot of people put this 1900. It is not because I have other pictures from other photographic collections in my personal uh, collections that prove that this was circa 1920. So that's the new jail right there, and the house behind it is the sheriff's home. It's still standing today. The jail is not standing anymore. It's now gone. Um, this is Bluntville circa 1927. Again, this has been dated back to the earlier period of 1900s, but you see the light pole, the power pole, and we know that it had to be after 27. Don't you just love those old cars? Mm -hmm. I love them. And notice that the Deary Inn has a porch on it that it didn't have before. I mean, that it doesn't have now. Uh, this is the courthouse circa 1927. Again, you'll see the power poles. And uh, notice that the columns were constructed of brick instead of the white plaster look that we see today. And the building that's on the left right there, that I believe, Tony, was that not the long drugstore, I believe? Uh, I think the long drugstore was on the far side of it. Uh, I was thinking happened. they owned this at a later time. They didn't. And, and this was uh, Clark's uh, Okay. Drugstore. And this is where actually the archives is located today, right here where this little building on the left is. So if you come to visit, and I hope you will, that's <laughs> where we're going to be. Uh, the streets were laid out in 1952, and again, the streets have been renamed since then. Franklin Drive is still Franklin Drive, and Central Avenue is now the Great Stage Road. So that's kind of neat. Great stage. Uh, during the Civil War, uh, the court records were destroyed, as I said, uh, and going back to this, one of the things that we do to commemorate is the Civil War Battle Bluntville reenactment, and we think this is really important to our history. People wonder, are you are you Southern, are you Northern? It isn't about being Southern or Northern. It's about preserving our history. It's about preserving a piece of our history that is who we are today. Almost all of our grandfathers fall on one side or the other, and it doesn't matter if they were North or South. Um, you know, we love them all, and we are who we are. But it's a part of our history, and we cannot neglect that. We try to get our school children involved, and as you'll see in some of the pictures I'm going to show you, that we've had over 600 school children involved in our events each year. So that's really, really good. We teach them things like soap making. It could be things like uh, the medical profession. There's a lot of things for them to learn. And they come very eager, very excited about learning anything to do with the Civil <clears throat> War. So we're grateful for the schools that do participate in that. People camp out beginning, they come in usually on a Wednesday night and they camp all the way through Sunday. So it's a great thing. Let me, um, just before we close, I, I want to take some questions and answers, and a lot of these I may not know. I don't consider myself an historian. I am an archivist and director of tourism. I love history. I love genealogy. My forte is in genealogy as opposed to just history in general. So some of the questions I may not know. But let me leave a question with you before we take Q&A, and that is, I want to ask you, what is lurking in your closet? And by that I mean, by that I mean, what do you have that you could share with us? Do you have obituaries? Do you have a shoebox full of obituaries? You're not Southern if your mother didn't have a shoebox of obituaries under the bed. You had to have them somewhere under the bed. Or if, you know, old photographs or um, old clippings, funeral home card things, you know, the memorial cards, we collect all those or, you know, copy them, whatever. You may have an old journal, old diary, whatever. So go home with the question, what is lurking in my closet? And think about bringing it up and letting us copy it if you'd be so kind. So I hope I have, you know, encouraged you for uh, 
about the history of Bluntville and hope that you might have some questions. Do you all have any questions or anything you'd like to contribute? Yes, sir. I know you said you didn't want to get into all of it, but what were, just generally, what were the two people hanged for? Was it a crime or a... Murder. Murder. Okay. Murder. Anything else? How recent you want a funeral? I'm sorry, I can't hear. How you. recent? My voice doesn't. Care. That's okay. How recent would you be interested in funeral notices or today? Did you have somebody die this morning? We'll take it. No, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But we do. We take anything, any time period. We love it. Anything else? Uh, yes, sir. The jail that's standing there, when was it built now? That was about 1868, as I recall. Are they renovating that? They put a new roof and everything on it. They are, and it's for an information center. And it really was the sheriff's home. And he did have some people jailed in that house as yeah. well at the time. But it's mostly it was mostly the sheriff's home. And the actual jail was right in front of it. And as I showed you in the picture, it's gone now. Is that the one that Kenny Wagner escaped from 1925? Don't think so. I think that was the one underneath the courthouse, was it not, Tony? I believe it was the one underneath the courthouse. Uh, the one that was the jail 20 years ago, if I recall. What's in the 1920 uh, courthouse building now? That is the same courthouse that we have today. That is our commission. We have commission there, county commission each month for the, on the third Monday. But the, all the trials are over at the new one, right? Right, that is correct. All of our trials are over at the new Justice Center, which was established maybe 20 some years ago. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Can you give us a little sketch of the Battle of Bluntville and what went on? And well, the Battle of Bluntville, it was all about the railroad. The railroad was the key, and the Union Army wanted that railroad more than anything. Even though we didn't have a railroad running right through Bluntville, they had to um, kill off Bluntville in order to get control of the railroad around Zollicoffer, which was Bluff City. And so Colonel John Foster came up on Cemetery Hill. It was just a four-hour battle. It was a very short battle. And the Confederate troops were around what we know as the Bluntville Middle School today. And so the little town was right in the middle, and they fired right upon it. And there's some cannonball shots, by the way, still in what is known, what we call the cannonball house, or other people may call it the Miller Haynes house. So uh, that's still there today, but that's just kind of what happened. And the Confederate troops were outnumbered three to one. So they didn't really have a Chinaman's chance. But some people say, who won the Battle of Blountville? A lot of people say it was a Union victory. But I have to ask myself, and I'm not prejudiced either way, but I have to ask myself, who held the town the next day? The Confederate Army, the, the townspeople held the town. They had that victory and the Union Army just moved out. So it was not a Union victory by any chance. It was really Confederate victory. It was because of the railroad? The purpose was the, of right. the battle? Was the Control of the railroads? That was control of the railroads in East Tennessee. It was the key to the Civil War. And it was Were control. they successful? Were they successful? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Union? Absolutely. They were, you mean at Bluntville or overall? Uh, at Bluntville, did the Union Army achieve their objective? I guess they did, but they didn't accomplish a whole lot since the town held it the next day. I'm not really sure of the grand scheme of things. Is this the railroad from? What, Atlanta, Knoxville, up to Roanoke? That's correct. Jonesboro, uh, all the way through Bristol, Bluff City, Bristol, yes. Anything else? What, what damage did they do to the town? What damage did they do to the town? They burned the courthouse, with the exception of the outer walls. They, the area where my office is now was burned. We have actually a map. It was from a 1917 manuscript of a gentleman who lived there. He was 14 years old when the battle began, and he drew it out, and he's lined out all the area that was burned. So half the town was burned. What, what records were, uh, were lost? What records were lost? All of the records were lost except for the deeds, and all of those are extant back to 1775. So we have the deeds, and they're gold. A lot of times the wills were recorded in the deeds, and uh, uh, lots of things are proven by the deeds.
How did the deeds escape? Well, the registered deeds took them home with him. <laughs> okay. He had them at home. You know, that's not legal or legitimate today, but we're glad he did. Was it by chance or was it, was it he anticipated that he would be protecting the record? There's no way of knowing. There's no way of knowing. Anything else? If someone is interested in their genealogy, should they make an appointment with you to kind of get them started, or how does that work? I would suggest that because sometimes I'm the only paid person full-time on staff. I have a part-time assistant. Mm -hmm. She's not always there, and if I have a meeting such as this morning, then I would have to lock up the office. Now, I do have her there this morning, yeah. but well, I want to be sure to be there not miss your visit. So do call me. Let me know you're coming. I'll kind of give you a head start. I do an 8 weeks course in genealogy. But nonetheless, uh, I could certainly give you a pedigree chart and get you started. And you know, a lot of your genealogy starts at home. I don't know if you all know this or not, but it starts with what you already know. Put down what you know and then seek to prove it. A lot of people, a lot of people will turn to Ancestry.com. That is the last place you should start for your genealogy. Now, let me say, let me say in haste that I use Ancestry.com every single day of my life. And I use it for census records and for records that are documented. When I'm looking at a copy of a record, then I know that I'm good to go. But if I'm looking at somebody else's tree, I don't know if Cousin Susie proved that or not. Or if she copied it from somebody else and it's gone around the barn. So be very careful with Ancestry.com. It's a good source if you know how to use it. It's like the LDS Church in Salt Lake City. I don't know if you all have ever been there. It's a wonderful facility. It's a wonderful place to do research. But again, you have to differentiate as far as uh, what is original source documentation and what is somebody else's tree that was suggested. So that's the, a good thing. For the novice, I'll say, it's beyond difficult. For the novice, it's beyond difficult. I'm talking about Ancestry.com. You think so? I found it very hard to use. I think the important thing before you turn to Ancestry is to have a pedigree chart. A blank chart. It doesn't matter how much you collect. Y'all can tell I love genealogy. I can talk to you all day long and I won't. But you've got to have a pedigree chart. You have to have that chart showing who you are and your grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents and so forth. It does not show cousins, aunts, and uncles. But it shows your direct lineages. You have to have that chart. That should be above all else that you collect. In the first six months of genealogy, you're going to amass filing cabinets full. I had a um, uh, cousin, distant cousin whom I'd never met, he called and he said, I'd like to have everything you have on the Rudisil family. And I said, which filing cabinet do you want? Because I've been collecting for years. He didn't answer me. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, you, you do. You collect a lot of things, but it's meaningless and pointless without that pedigree chart. So I'd be happy to get you started on that and, and show you what to do. And, do you have some classes or workshops? We, generally, I teach an eight weeks course in the spring and an eight weeks course in the fall around Bluntville. So just if you want to get on our email list, go to historicsullivan.com, hit the newsletter button. It's free. I'm the only person that sees your, your email address and you don't get any spam. Nobody else sees it except me. We don't share the list. So just go to historicsullivan.com and sign up for the newsletter. And you'll also get some things about the Battle of Bluntville Military Park, uh, maybe things about the reenactment, maybe about the flea market coming up in September, which is the second Saturday in September. Or we're having an old West Day in June. That's something else you'll get information. <coughs> so we're kind of a hodgepodge of things. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. What are your hours in your office? We're eight to four thirty Monday through Friday, with the exception of lunch. You'd be amazed at the people that come in at five to twelve. <laughs> it's amazing, but I have had to say, and I've missed a lot of meals, you can tell, but I've had to say, you know, I, I have to close for lunch, and I do apologize, and I really do, but, what you know, time? we just don't have... What's your lunch time? It's 12, 12 to 1. Thank you. Yes. Do you have any idea who received Elizabeth Collins's information? She collected a lot of genealogy. Elizabeth was a dear, close friend of mine, and she amassed a lot of information over the years. She died, and Mary I believe. Worked with her quite much. Pardon? Mary Carter worked with her. Mary and Elizabeth and I all three worked <coughs> together, and um, Elizabeth gave me a copy of her database long before she died. So I have a copy of it. Uh, I don't know about her personal things. I think it went to a niece, maybe. So. It'd be nice to get a hold of those. <laughs> and you know, the, the thing about it is, 
you all probably have some things like this in your possession like this, and you don't. You want to make sure that it's taken care of, that you designate where you want that to go. Put down Sullivan County Archives. No, we, we, I'm serious. You, you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you all having me here. You're a good group, and I'd love to come back and talk to you again and just um, take care. I'm going to look for you at the archives. Thank you. <laughs> you're coming over here and uh, I'll speak for myself. I for one didn't know you had all that stuff over there. Stuff's not the right word for me. And, uh, thank you for uh, your knowledge too of the uh, broad base of things and that's so impressive. So, uh, I also want to acknowledge Tim Mullen, our photographer here and uh, Tim is making a copy, copy for the archives of Kingsport for we, we try to do that uh, through the years, but we've had trouble keeping and getting and keeping a uh, videographer, so we're delighted to have you and also your father. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. You wouldn't be here if you said for Literally. <laughs> but we appreciate the first timers, but we appreciate everybody's coming, and we hope you'll be with us next month when. The program is Dr. Larry Fleener. Is that yeah. right? He's from Southwest Virginia somewhere. Big Stone, Big Stone Gap. Yeah. And he's going to talk about the history of the area. He's very knowledgeable, so we'll have to pin him down a little bit. But uh, he's uh, looking forward to him. So that'll be June the 6th, I believe it is. 6th of June. Yeah, yeah, D Day, but that's okay. So, okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And Sheila, may stick around here.